Hello, this recording is in regards to my ID to ID midpoint reflection for the 2019-2020 school year. So far, this is my second year doing the program and I get to work with an awesome ID. Her name is Lucy Wolski and she's from Arizona State University. We have decided to make a tool, which is a survey that will help us improve our work and make us a bit more efficient when we are beginning our partnerships with faculty for the collaborative build of a course. Um, part of the problem is, is you have a kickoff meeting and you don't always have the chance to uncover everything about a faculty member in that amount of time, and then you're off to the races building. At my institution, we have a 12-week build, which really isn't that much time when you think about an online course. So we wanted to make, uh, and we are making, a faculty self-assessment survey that will help them identify um, their competencies as well as motivators and inhibitors. So we base this off of some research. Uh, Martin Boudrani and Wang um, in their 2019 publication examining faculty perceptions of their readiness to teach online. We use that to look at how, how ready they are to dig into course design, um, course communication, time management, and technical, technical competence. And what really started emerging was technical competence. So our survey is focusing on that, as well as um, motivators and barriers, and this was based off of McGuire's 2005 literature review, Faculty Participation in Online Distance Education, Barriers and Motivators. And this was a review of 13 studies that generated categories of motivators and inhibitors for intrinsic, extrinsic, and institutional obstacles and helpers. So that's very helpful as well because we want to know what motivates them, what makes them very nervous about going online, and what are some things that are just out of their control as well as our own. Um, perhaps that could help us make a case to the institution for making some change to help faculty build uh, their online courses. What we need to do, so part of it is we have our survey um, I've asked our assessment person here at Colorado School of Mines to help us tweak the wording and make sure that it's not biased. So we have created the survey. The next step is to write up our experience, a one to two page paper to submit to the ASU Shaping EDU Open Access Journal. And that is due November 1st. So that's our next step. So first of all, we gotta refine our survey. Then we're going to write up the experience as a platform to share the survey. Um, some of the obstacles we faced when it was just Lucy and I, we were moving along really quickly, but once we brought in an assessment person, anytime you bring in more people, it gets a little more challenging. So, But it's been good because every time I get to work with our assessment person, Megan Sanders, I learn a lot, especially about the importance of language. So. She's helping us hone our survey making skills. And, um, but then we are working with someone else's timeline and busy schedule, but it's all been worth it um, in, the, in the long run. So I'm grateful for that opportunity to collaborate. This, we're also working with a tighter timeline than what the ID to ID program requires. We, that would end in January to submit to the ASU Shaping Education Journal uh, we have to submit by November 1st, which is about two weeks away. And we're in, a, we're in a decent place to help mitigate fears that we won't get that done. We have a couple more meetings on the calendar and we're gonna be working more on our own and editing each other's work rather than trying to have working meetings. So that's kind of where we are at midpoint and it truly does feel like the midpoint. Uh, I am thoroughly enjoying the ID to ID program. I love getting partnered with people from around the country, uh, working in higher ed in the same capacity as myself as an instructional designer, learning experience designer. 
So it opens my eyes a lot to see what's out there and the variety of our work, yet there are some similarities. So it's a great experience and I'm grateful for it. Um, I can't believe it's free and it's super cool. So thank you everyone at the Penn State ID to ID program, putting this on and making it happen.